Hello there everyone, my name is Nathan Birch. In this video, we are going to go through this stretch challenge. Okay, so I already made a video showing all of this, the rest of this stuff, to do like the base assignment here. Um, but doing the stretch challenge will actually be really, really helpful. Uh, just the code from this will be a really good starting point for any future projects uh, because it has the whole API backend set up in a very simple way for the most part. So let's go ahead and dive in. So connect API to MongoDB and retrieve data from the database. Well, obviously before we can do this, we need a database, right? So I turn to mongodb.com. If you haven't signed up, go ahead and sign up. And if I go to sign in, let me make sure I can sign in here and give that a sec. Um, you'll notice a couple of things here, but really the only thing I'm worried about is that I have a cluster, which you should have made as you were setting this up. Um, if I hit connect right here, uh, it gives me a couple of different options. I prefer using MongoDB Compass. Uh, it works out really, really nicely. Uh, and I can show you what that looks like here in a second. Um, but anyways, so once I connected, uh, I had to make sure of a couple of things, right? Um, I had to go to database access and I had to make a user with a password that I'll need later. And I had to go to network access. Um, and right now I have two IP addresses that are active. Uh, this one will be just like anything. Um, any IP address that it will ever be used uh, can access my database currently. This is great for testing purposes and shouldn't be kept here uh, for much more than that. Uh, once a website's actually published, then you can use the IP address of that website, okay? Um, but that's pretty much it that you need uh, to get set up. Um, when you say connect to uh, the MongoDB compass, it'll give you this connection string. And obviously you need to replace your password with the actual password, okay? Um, and then once you get to MongoDB, here, let me just pull this up here. I'm gonna close it so that I can open it fresh and show you guys what it looks like. So this is what MongoDB looks like, or MongoDB Compass. Uh, and this is a recent connection that I had, and I can just connect to it. Um, it's nice because my password's masked, masked and everything. Um, anyways, I have a few different collections in here, uh, but this test collection is what I'll be using today. So all of the data that was in just that JavaScript file from my last video, just from like the base assignment, I went ahead and put into here. And it was actually really easy to do uh, we had that object um, and just just in the JavaScript. And so what I did, oh, I wonder if I deleted it. Mm, I think I deleted it. Oh no, it's right there. Okay, let me open this up. Uh, so what I did, I just put uh, quotation marks around each of the keys and I added this new key and put the whole thing inside of its own object, okay? Uh, but outside of that, it's just, it was almost a JSON anyways, it was just a JavaScript object. Uh, but that's what I did, and then I saved, it as a, I saved it as a JSON, and then in here, I could just say add data, import file, and it just let me import a JSON file, okay? So that's how this got here, and now my data's here, and I could start working on my API, okay? So that's what my data looks like, and that's what I did to kind of set up the database by itself, okay? Now, let's talk about uh, this next part, right? Connecting your API to MongoDB. Now, this can be kind of difficult at times, especially because there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. And if you look online, there are a lot of different ways that people do it, right? So if you find somebody posting about it, you kind of got to like stick with one thing for the most, for the most part. Um, but I have this open right here just to show you guys what I've changed since my last video. So it looks like a total of five files, and I'll show you why. Uh, this git ignore file, I created an, an environment file. This is because to connect to MongoDB, I need the URL of the database and the password and my username, all in one beautiful string. And I don't want that going to GitHub, I don't want that being published anywhere. So to get around that, we make what is called an environment variable, this one right here, which I'll show you in a little bit, which has that connection string in it, right? Pretty much the exact same thing that MongoDB gave us, okay? Uh, let's come back over here. 
So that's why the git ignore changed. The app.js changed. It looks like a lot of changes, but it's really not. Uh, we uh, are requiring this MongoDB file, which ha has the information to connect to MongoDB. Um, I, ch I changed the port just from this 8080 to actually support uh, a production port. That's good practice, and when I publish my application, uh, this is the port that'll get used, right? Whatever Heroku wants to use. And if that's not available, then it'll go ahead and, and use 8080. Uh, let's see what else here. All of this is the same. And then this right here changed, right? Where I actually listen to the port, which we had down here, I put inside of this MongoDB connect. Okay, and again, I'll show you, I'll show you guys this file here in a sec. But basically what this is saying is, hey, go ahead and connect to my MongoDB uh, instance. If there's an error, let's just show it in the console. Otherwise, we'll display a nice message saying saying connected to DB and listening on 8080, okay? So that's what changed there. Uh, let's see, launch.json barely even counts. I set this up uh, just so that I could debug. I love debugging my node applications because things don't work for me on the first time around. And so so I set up this um, this configuration. And you guys can do this exact same thing. You could even like copy this exact same code or you could just Google how to debug node project in VS Code, and you'll find this exact same thing, okay? Uh, Professional.js, so this is where all my data was, right? My original object, and now it's not there anymore. Isn't this just a billion times better, okay? Uh, especially with the base64 image in there, man, what a mess. Uh, so originally, we just had this exports.getData, and we just returned that object, right? I am still exporting getData. This, I can put a comma to limited list here, and export multiple functions. Um, and that's what I prefer to do because I also made this an asynchronous function. Uh, let me just move that over just a little bit, okay? And so this same thing that I use in the app.js file to connect to MongoDB, I'll wait for that connection, and then I'll search in my users collection, and this find, without anything in there, will just return everything in it, which right now is only one thing. We get that result, we convert it to an array, loop through it, and I just say, hey, I just want that first item in that array, which is all there will be right now because there's only one thing in there. Uh, line six, we'll just say, hey, I'm sending back JSON. And line seven, we say, hey, let's give it a successful status message. And then we'll send back our data. Okay, uh, connect.js, finally, where the rubber kind of hits the road. So check this out. Um, these first two lines are allowing me to access my environment file. This guy right here, okay? So the dot env package, which I installed, I read npm install dot env, um, and then I have this config, and then when I go to connect, I use this, instead of like a string that anyone could use to like hack into my database, okay? Uh, Mongo client, npm install mongodb, and I used Mongo client there. And then down here, this is a nice solution that I found. Um, let me see if I can pull it up here. Oh, it's right here. I was looking for a good way to like store my Mongo connection stuff out like in the in its own file so that I could use it in my in my individual functions when I'm trying to get data or, or change data as well as connecting for my entire application. And so see this is like pretty much the exact same thing, right? Um, and then let's see. Oh, it was down here. Yeah, so this is pretty much the exact same thing except I'm getting this data from an environment variable. Uh, but we still have this init DB it says, hey, if this is here, if this variable has been given a value, then we'll just return this function and we'll keep on going, okay? And if it's not, then we'll go ahead and connect to our database and then we'll assign that variable. And then get DB is the other function that I can call and it says, hey, if there's not a DB, then we'll say it hasn't been initialized. Otherwise, we'll return that database connection. Okay, so it worked out really nicely. Uh, let me show you guys what this whole thing looks like. So it says it's listening on 8080, and this really isn't gonna look like much, but let me show you guys anyways. So if I come over here, that is what it looks like, okay? I, I actually have data showing up here. So I can put a breakpoint right here, and if I hit refresh, then you can see what my data looks like coming back, and this looks exactly like it did in my last video, right? Except this time it's actually coming from a database. Uh, if I come back over here, let me just go to my file explorer 
be a little bit easier to see what's going on. Okay, uh, again, we have this MongoDB init DB. So I initialize the DB on line 18 of app.js. Okay, and then in my controller over here, instead of using init DB, uh, let's see here, I use get DB, right? Because this guy is exporting to, it has two different functions available in it. It has init DB and get DB. Okay, so I don't have to keep on like remaking connections over and over and over and over and over again. Now, this is really cool because I'll be able to do this exact same thing in all of my Node API projects, every single one of them. Anytime I wanna make an API for any website, anytime it's using MongoDB, I can pretty much use this exact same code. Okay, now let me show you guys this last chunk here, uh, this environment variable, right? So I told you guys that I have this .env file. Uh, give me just one sec and I'll open it up for you. Okay, here is what it looks like. I just put in a fake password, uh, but I set a variable called MongoDB URI equals, and then here's that MongoDB string that I got directly from MongoDB that I used in MongoDB Compass, and I'm also gonna use it here, okay? And so when I go to um, my connect file, I'll say, hey, find my environment file, and then I have a variable called mongodb underscore URI, and that's right here. So really, I could have a bunch of variables in here, and that would work out just fine. And when I access my process.env, I would just say the variable name of each one, okay? And so this, notice that it's grayed out. It's in my gitignore file, which means this will never ever get pushed up to GitHub. This will only work locally. So when I want to publish this, um, I'll have to basically put in this data um, on Heroku's website, it, like in my application in, on the server, so that when it runs on the server, it can access environment variables there. And so these, these, these variables will never get pushed up to any, so, any sort of version control, and our application will remain nice and secure. Okay, so I'm trying to think if I missed anything. I think that's pretty much it. You'll notice that I used to have that this used to be called config, and this was like a config file from an, uh, and, and I just renamed that to connect.js, and I put the config stuff in here for the .env, uh, just directly in here, right? Because that's, that's the only time I'm gonna be using this, at least for now. Um, and then here, here's my first request from a database, right? And this find function for MongoDB can be used for all sorts of stuff. I can put all sorts of type, like of filters and things in here to say, hey, I wanna find something by an ID or every item that's more than $10 or whatever it is. Um, but then same thing, I'll just say res.status200 to be successful and we'll return whatever data we want. And on the front end, what that looks like is it comes back and we just have that data, okay? Again, last time pulling up my database, it made a list of every single um, piece of data in here, right? So this is just one object, basically, one piece of data. You can see I have one document, okay? And so it made a list of one item, and then I just returned element zero in that list to get this whole thing, okay? So uh, I hope that this was helpful. Uh, I'll go ahead and post the code for this so that you guys have it. Uh, but if you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask. Thanks.